so hello and welcome to our ninth lesson in our study of functional analysis so in this video we would prove then because this inequality or we will show that the p norm is a norm okay all right so there is a question here that we are going to solve show that the p norm or lp norm is a norm so to show that something is a norm then we have to verify the axioms for which something is a norm right that is the positivity or positive semi-definiteness right semi-positiveness absolute homogeneity or scaling and the triangle inequality so we have to verify these and as i always say verifying this and that is very very simple always the work is a triangle inequality so we know from from definition for p greater than or equal to one the p norm of a vector x equals x1 x2 to xn is given by what you can see here right so what the question wants us to do is to verify that this is a vector norm is indeed a vector norm okay so um you know this can be written in this form right okay when we when we expand it there's a compact form and this is the form where we have expanded it so we have to first show the word positivity or positive definiteness right so you see this is the p norm and to show positivity or positive definiteness right we have to show that this is greater than zero right but you know we also include when it is zero that's when you mostly bring the greater than or equal to then we name the semi-positive definiteness by the same thing okay right so you could see that the p norm is given by what we can see here and you could see that these things are absolute values and when you find the absolute value of any number you get a positive number and when you add positive numbers you get a positive number when you find a square root of a positive number you always get a positive number so it means that the p norm is always greater than zero but it is only zero when our x1 x2 xn is equal to zero that is if that particular vector is the zero vector okay so we have been able to prove the positivity and the semi positive definiteness right it's so another very simple and the scaling is also very simple right so the scaling is that so what if you attach a particular um constant right to the vector x right from the particular field you are talking about so alpha x then the p norm will i mean wherever you have the x's we will put alpha there right and you can see that we can bring our alpha p out right so when you bring our alpha p out then we are going to have alpha p times one over p then whatever we have here and this p cancels this p so that we have the magnitude of or the absolute value of alpha multiply by where we can see here and this here is the definition of the p norm so that means that we've been able to derive that this is equal to this right so we've been able to show that scaling or absolute homogeneity also holds right so yeah now the last thing for us to do is to show that the triangle inequality is satisfied then when you do that then you've been able to show that indeed the p norm is a vector norm and in showing that what we are going to do is to we are going to prove the Mikowski's inequality okay so in this video we are doing two things at the same time showing that the p norm is indeed a vector norm and also proving the Mikowski's inequality okay so let's take the p norm for and um, the triangle inequality for the p norm so we let x y being x right where x is equal to x1 x2 to xn and 
y to be equal to y1, y2 to y, and then this is the triangle inequality, right, for the p norm, or this is the Mikulski's inequality. So we have to prove this, which is the same as the Mikulski's inequality, as I told you. All right. So let's go to the proof. So I know we all know that this here is true because it's a general um that's the general this one that we know um the general triangle inequality that we know. Okay. So that's cool. So we are going to take this here. We're just going to take the right hand side of the equation, right? So we are going to go through some series of um, mathematical computations here, which is going, which are going to help us in the proof. And the truth is that it's not difficult at all. It will just be a bit tedious, but not difficult. So bring your mind here, and the understanding will come. Okay, we are going to apply. The basic mathematics that you know. So you know when we take this, all right, the absolute value of x i plus the absolute value of actually which is the norm, the norm of x i plus the norm of y i raised to the power p, right? You know, in indices, when you have something like s raised to the power n, you can write this as s times s raised to the power n minus one. So that's the same thing we've done here. I hope you can see that. All right. Then when we, after doing that, what we do is that we try to take this, multiply it by this, take this, and also multiply it by this. And that gives us these two equations, these two separate terms that we have here, all right? So we call everything here equation one. So after getting this, what we are going to do is to find the sum of both sides, all right? So there's the left-hand side and the right-hand side where we have two terms. So when we find the sum of both sides, then we will get what you can see here, right? We just took the sum on both sides. Okay, so now we can apply the Hodes inequality to both terms of the right-hand side. So we will use that on this one and on that one, right? So recall from our previous video, the Hodes inequality <coughs> was given by this. So, if p is greater than 1 and q is greater than 1 are such that 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1, then for all x, y in Rn, we have what you can see here, right? Okay. So, this is the Hodes inequality. So, you can see, right, when you have two things. One of them takes this form, the other one takes this form. So that's the same thing we are going to do with our sum. Okay. So we will take the first one, which is this one, and let's see when we apply the Hodes inequality on it, what we get. So this is it. We are going to get for the first one, we will get it to be less than or equal to summation i starting from 1 to n the norm of x i p raised to the power p, right? Then the other side will be summation i starting from 1 to n, this, then raised to the power k, then all raised to the power 1 over k, right? This is equation 2. Then we do the same thing to the second term on the right hand side. And that also gives us this, right? Using the definition of the Hodes inequality. Okay. All right. So after getting this, then you know this is equation three and this equi this equation two, this equation three. All right. So we'll come here and put them inside our equation um one. All right. So combining equation one, two, and three. Now we are going to have. Summation i starting from 1 to n, the norm of x i plus the norm of y i raised to the power p less than or equal to what you can see here. Right, so you can see that um this term here and this term here are the same. So we 
just factorize them out and we have this where is it okay so we have this you can see it's very simple it's very very simple for you to understand it's just the analysis you are making right okay so don't worry at all so you can see that with the Hodes inequality we said this equation holds 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1 so that means that this thing that we have here the p minus 1 times q here is the same as p right and let me tell you why it is so so you know p minus 1 q right we have p minus 1 times q but from this equation 1 over q is equal to 1 minus 1 over p and q is equal to 1 all over 1 minus 1 over p which is the same as 1 all over p minus 1 over p which is the same as p over p minus 1 so when you put this here inside this equation to replace the kill then we'll get p minus 1 times p over p minus 1 so p minus 1 cancels p minus 1 we get p so that means p minus 1 times q is the same as p so we can replace whatever we have here with p okay all right so doing that is going to give us this you can see that it was originally p minus 1 times q but we have p here all right then you can see that um we can we want this one to stand alone at the right hand side so you have to divide through by this this term here right so when you divide through by that term here then we are going to get this so summation i starting from one to n summation from x i plus y i raised to the power p plus whatever we have here right so what do i have here divided by whatever we have here right so that's what you can see here then let's know you call to the right hand side this one <clears throat> also you can see that with indices when we are dividing and we have the same power then we just subtract from the same power so when you have something like x n over x one this is the same as x n minus one so here that's the same thing we are going to do so you can see that if i try to write this in this form this is the whole of this power one so when we simplify this we are going to get the whole of that then one minus the power here one over q right and this is less than or equal to the right hand side okay all right so I hope you get this the next one the next thing for us to prove is to show that this one minus one over q is the same as one over p and it's very simple to show that because we know this equation holds one over p plus one over q equals one so one over p will be equal to one minus one over q which we see here so that means this one minus one over q here is the same as one over p so we will make that substitution here and that will give us what you can see here and brothers and sisters is this not the Mikowski's inequality yes it is so we've been able to show that yeah the triangle inequality holds for the p norm and in other ways we've been able to prove the Mikowski's inequality okay so that's it you've been able to solve the question so we've been able to show that the p norm or the lp norm satisfies all the asium for which something is a norm okay so thank you very much so in our next video we'll talk about what we call equivalent norms all right and try to prove that when two norms are equivalent then they induce or generate the same topology or they generate the same open sets okay all right so that's what we'll be doing in our next video so thank you very much and see you in the next video